Welcome to the 2021 Bucks Fever Virtual Artist Studio Tour. I'm Howard Cooperman, owner of the Artist Sales and Marketing, and honored to once again be the chairman of the Studio Tour Committee. The event could not be made possible without the assistance of my committee members, Amanda Soler and Brad Sanders at the Chamber, and Debbie Wagner, the Graphic Edge. Our major patrons, Bob and Rick Welch from Academy Wealth Advisors, have contributed to this event to make it possible for many years, and a special thanks goes out to them for their support. So, sit back, relax, and enjoy this half-hour production expertly edited by Brad Sanders, Director of Marketing for the Central Bucks Chamber of Commerce, and feel free to share this video with your friends, family, and coworkers. I'm Ed Buffman. I'm a sculptor I'm in mixed media. When, when I start a piece of sculpture, uh, I start with a, some structure of wood, some big chunk of wood. Could be the top of a tree, could be a beam, uh, could be a, a thick plank. I think about it and I look at it and then I'll scribe a line that comes from what I thought about before, and I'll start to work that line. That, that, that first line that I strike, that first line, uh, it is a beginning, but it is just that, it's a beginning. It's, it's taking the first step, it's starting the movement forward. Things evolve from that, and sometimes they evolve in a way that I initially had imagined and envisioned, and sometimes it really goes a whole different way, because, um, as, as I eliminate the wood and as I create the shape, I have these aha moments, you know, these where something is like, oh, look at that, or let's curl it this way. Uh, you find things that are interesting that you don't want to mess up, so you move around them. So it's, it's a constant conversation between what you intend to do and what the wood says it would like you to do, um, which is one of the things I find quite magical about it, the conversation. The wood says, don't go any farther, or look at this. Now, when you make furniture or you make things out of dimensional lumber, uh, I like to bring some of that living aspect to it. There's a conversation that happens there too. You find things in it when you start to shape it and plane it and, uh, and, uh, and square it up. The structure of doing the artwork is really pretty singular in that it all comes from here, comes from here. Um, um, I find it to be a really wonderful place to be when I'm in that creative place and um, not governed by time. I mean, there are times I'll get up in the middle of the night and I'll go do something. I'll lay in bed, I'm sleeping, and I wake up and I have an idea and I'll go downstairs and <laughs> start working. But in a subtractive style of work, which is what I do, the, you have to, uh, if you keep going, you'll end up with a toothpick. So. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's just a feeling that I get. I just sense when it's completed. I, I, I can't put it on paper, it's just, it, I touch it, uh, I look at it, I walk around it, um, and it's just like, yeah, it's done. It's very tactile, uh, and I welcome people to touch the work because there's there's life in it, there's energy in it. It's not just a visual thing. It's a three-dimensional living thing. It's a meditative place for me. I'm in wonderment of, of what Mother Nature gives us with this. Uh, so, um, I, I love doing it. I'm Deborah Eater. We're outside the barn in Community Park on Langhorn Yardley Road, and inside is my studio 
where I work at my collage. I'd like you to come inside with me and have a look around. This is a co-op space that I currently share with one other artist, but I'm mainly going to just show you my areas. I have some storage and work on the easel here is a very recently finished collage. It's magazine clippings and hand painted paper on a cradled canvas. I normally work at the, the table laid out flat, but when the work is nearly completed, I like to set it up on an easel so that I can step back and see just what it needs. Then here's my work table with all my supplies set out and a very similar piece that I'm currently working on. It's in a much earlier stage right now. Behind that, I have my work desk where I like to uh, draft compositions, play around with ideas and different media. On the windowsill, these are part of a series of collages uh, five by seven. It's a size I like to work on a lot. These were done during the fall and winter months. And over here, this table, I have my deacidifying station because the magazine clippings that I like to work with are not acid free. So I give them a soak in a solution that will deacidify and buffer them and then lay them out here to dry. Now, the recipe for that solution is on my website, DebraEater.com. Then I store my clippings in file folders, sort by color. And of course, I have uh, stacks of magazines just everywhere. Some other pieces that are going into the current work in progress. And that wraps up our tour. Thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed your tour. And thank you to the Chamber of Commerce for making this tour possible. If you'd like to see more of my artwork, you can visit my website, DebraEater.com. from Bucks County, Pennsylvania. This is the first of three places that I consider to be my studio. It's located in my home. I'm an impressionist painter as well as an abstract painter, and I paint in oils as well as oils with cold wax. The lighting here is controlled. I create still life paintings of florals, pastries, cupcakes, and cakes. I also create abstract paintings that I use still life setups or photos as reference. Oftentimes, my abstracts also come from thoughts and feelings that are going on in my head at the time. I create landscape paintings that I use photos as reference. Um, these photos I've taken myself, but I tend to like to do landscape painting outdoors, so I don't do the landscapes here very frequently. I always have music on in the background. I'll lay down a rough sketch of lines, shapes, shadows, and light and then I will lay down my first color notes. After that, I tend to get completely lost in my paintings. I um, will use thick brushes to lay down thick brush strokes. I use the palette knife for the same reason. I just love the thick paint. And before I know it, my paintings are completed. Um, that's pretty much my process. And oftentimes I don't even know how I get from the uh, first color notes to completion, but it's a thoroughly enjoyable process. The second place I consider to be my studio is outside. I often bring my studio outdoors. I do impressionistic type landscapes as well as abstracts, using the scene before me as a reference for light, colors, and shapes. The shifting light is probably the most challenging part of painting outdoors. 
that in the heat and cold, the wind, the glare, the bugs, and yet plein air painting is one of my favorite things to do. The third place that I consider to be my studio is at the Art Colony Gallery in Prawlsville Mills in Stockton, New Jersey. I get inspiration from the seven other wonderful friends and artists with whom I show my work here at the gallery. Our group is called the Painters Collective and we formed our group in 2012. We met while taking classes together from a local teaching artist. We inspire, influence, and support one another. We look forward to doing more workshops together again here at the gallery and elsewhere, as well as paint, travel, and socialize together as we did prior to the pandemic. For now, our gallery is open every weekend from 12 to 4. We are always adding new paintings to our collection, and while our styles blend well together, the gallery offers a diverse body of work from eight different artists. Please plan to come on by for a visit. Hi, my name is Eileen Rubin, and this is my studio. Welcome, come on in, I'll show you around. I have lots of art on the wall. I am primarily an oil painter, but I do also use pastels, such as this painting called Corona Del Mar. This is an oil painting called Crystal Clear. And this is my studio. This is where I work. I have lots of natural light, but I also have lots of options for light. I have lots of storage and I have it all organized by supplies and areas for easels, canvases and whatnot. I have these shelves here with reference materials, but I do prefer to use a tablet for references if I am using one. This is a painting that I have in process right now. I have a shelf for items that I keep for still life paintings. I have a drawing table for preliminary sketches and thumbnail sketches. These are two of my published books, Reason to Kill and As the River Flows. They're both available on Amazon. I have a drying rack for paintings that are either not quite dry or not quite finished, or I'm thinking about them to decide if they're finished. These shelves have framed art or frames waiting for art in felt bags that I've made to protect the frames from scratching and denting and chipping. And I do sell these on my website, fineartsacks.com, S-A-C-K-S. -S. I do enjoy when people want to come by and paint with me or see the art in person that they may have seen on my website. I have lots of reference material and books and magazines over here. This painting is in process and not quite done. I have a work table that I use for cutting felt or framing. Right now I have a lot of books on it and I do go through those quite thoroughly, sometimes several times. And also for future projects like the little bird houses, which for spring will be done. I also have a contemplation area where I do a lot of reading or thinking about my art and what might be my next painting. If you're interested, you can see my art at www.eileenrubin.com. And I love to talk about art, and I'd love to show you around. Feel free to contact me. Thank you. Thanks for visiting.
Hi, I'm Jen Gershon and welcome to my studio. So my two favorite genres are light painting, still life light painting, and portraiture. I've been collecting a random assortment of objects over many years. Some because they're just interesting to look at and others because I think they'll make kind of a cool picture. Over here is my ever-growing collection of vintage and costumes. And this is generally where the portraits start from. So most of the time, a model will come in, we'll just sort of poke through the clothes, and they'll find something that kind of speaks to them, and we'll go from there. Most of the time, the, uh, the shoots are completely unplanned, other than I know who I'm shooting, and we kind of go from there. So this was once my living room, which is now where I shoot. It's, um, it's a fairly limited size space. My ceilings are not terribly tall, so I kind of have to work with what I have, but usually starts with an object or an idea or a theme that we kind of make up as we go. <laughs> and spend a few hours just sort of playing with a story I'll rearrange these, uh, these V-flats a little bit and make little rooms and things. Tucked back here is a bunch of lamps and props. This is the remnants of one of the sets that I did for a light painting image. I learned light painting from Harold Ross and Lancaster, who's just absolutely the master at this technique. But it involves shooting in the dark with a flashlight and then doing multiple layers in Photoshop to really bring out the lighting and details in, uh, in the objects that you're shooting. So this is my office where I would say I spend about 75% of my time uh, I spend a good deal amount of time editing. Um, the images sort of take on a different life once I bring them into Photoshop and Lightroom and play with them a little bit. Thanks for taking a minute to look around. You can find me at at visuals on Instagram and Facebook. I'm Jennifer Hansen Raleigh, and first of all, I just want to thank Fox Fever for inviting me to be a part of their studio tour for 2021. Um, I am a uh, impressionist painter, and I have been painting my entire life. Just about, uh, my father bought me a uh, professional oil painter's box when I was a very young girl, about nine or ten years old. I grew up in Yardley, and he would take me out into the beautiful countryside, and he taught me how to use those oils and put them on the canvas and mix my paints. Um, and today I reside in Newtown, Pennsylvania with my family. And that is where my studio is. I will include some photos of it in just a bit. But uh, in lieu of a tour, I am actually standing at the Silverman Gallery in Buckingham, PA, which is where I've been showing my work for the last decade since it opened. And um, today it is run by the wonderful Rhonda Garland. I'm, you would know her, I could show you, but she's the one behind the camera at this moment. Um, but currently I have an exhibit here uh, running to the end of um, Mother's Day, but I always show my work here, so you're welcome to stop by any time of the year and find my paintings hanging here. Um, the title of my show right now is called The Space Between, and I chose that title because it's the majority, well actually all these paintings 
have been painted during that space between the before that we knew before COVID and uh, what's going to be in the future. Um, and it also has a lot of other meanings to me, like I do a lot of sky paintings, so the space between heaven and earth and the space between New Jersey and Pennsylvania, our beautiful rivers and, and riverbanks, and uh, just just this time that I spend in between and the little slivers and moments that I, I really like to capture on my canvases and uh, hope to bring to the viewer's eye what I, I see, the little spirit that, spark that I see that I wanna put down on canvas. Uh, just like this painting behind me, it's titled Late Spring Garden. Um, this was an unusual painting for me because I, it's half imagination, half reality. I stumbled upon this beautiful garden um, and, and it was dying off. It was late spring and a lot of these flowers were beginning to die off. So I had to piece together ones that I could find within like the whole photo shoot that I took of this garden and piece them all together and uh, create this beautiful garden. And as I painted it, um, it just really, if you look at it, there's a lot of things that I left unfinished, but when I would go back to finish it, I just loved leaving them just the way they were. I actually would go back, when I tried to finish this little interior garden, there was more definition of rocks and everything, and I wiped that away and just went back to the original with like little bricks holding that in there. And like the unfinished steeples, or uh, chimneys of the, of the house, and um, one thing I know uh, what people like to know during these tours is the way an artist works and the way I always work, um, it's not always on canvas, I work on a board probably 50% of the time, but all my larger pieces are always on canvas and uh, I always tint, no matter what I'm painting, I will tint the background, I will never paint just on pure white. Um, and just, I, I, I just prefer, the little hints of one color pulling my whole painting through. And uh, I can see my lights pop off of it when I'm painting my whites and I can see the darks recess. Um, one of my favorite things to paint is light or the effects of light, the effects of light on whatever it is that I'm painting. That's what draws me into an image that I wanna put down in paint and the contrasted and the uh, juxtaposed with the heavy shadows with it. So I'm going to continue. I'm going to continue um, this video, but I'm going to just narrate and take you through the rest of my show and uh, speak on a few other paintings that are here. Starting here with this grouping, um, this was my, what you see back here is Jericho's Sky. This was my, the first painting I did for the entire exhibit in earlier 2020. I'm just gonna walk you through. This was a favorite. Everybody loved the bold, bright colors in this piece. <laughs> this large piece finished, this is my very last piece for the entire exhibit. And it's titled, titled Billowing Fields, Bucks County. And the last piece I'd love to talk about is this piece, and um, it's titled All Else in Life is Folly. And that is a lyric from a favorite opera of my mother's. And it is a painting of the Metropolitan Opera in Lincoln Center in New York City. And it's a painting I had been wanting to tackle for a long time. Um, we had visited the opera probably about nine years ago. And, um, and since then, my mother's passed away and um, I could really feel something when I was painting this painting. And a lot of people asked me, how could you sell this painting? And I will always have that feeling that I had. It was a sensational feeling. It was an exhilarating feeling when I painted it. It had nothing to do with sorrow. And um, I will always have that. And, and I'm happy to have somebody live with this painting. And here we are back where we started. Here's 
another favorite painting of mine. It's called Roadies and Roddies. It's of a barn about three minutes from where I live now and about three minutes from in the other direction from where I grew up. And it's framed in my signature frame created by the wonderful Dave Maderi, custom framer, located out in Topton, Pennsylvania. Hello, my name is Amanda Lair. I am an artist and a teacher, and welcome to my studio. My studio is a beautiful, well-lit space that has plenty of room to spread out and be creative. This is where your creative journey begins. My students are as unique and wonderful as their art. Each student is treated as an individual. Every child and adult is on their own creative path, and I am there to guide them. The studio companion, Bella, gives comfort, love, and inspiration. It doesn't matter. If you're a child or an adult, drawing is a good place to start. I can help you build your portfolio or create a unique style. Drawing is always a good foundation. Perhaps watercolor is your passion, or maybe acrylic painting. Either way, you can do that at the studio. If you're looking for something fun to do on a Friday night, come join Laura Bray from Moral Dreams for a sip and pour workshop at my studio. Chalk pastels are a wonderful medium to introduce young artists to color. Join a class, be a part of the studio. Let me help you on your creative journey. Hi, I'm Josh Friedman, and I'm a landscape photographer in Bucks County. Inspiration for my photos comes from nature, history, architecture, and travel. From the time that I was a kid, I took photos with traditional film cameras, and way back, I had a darkroom. Presently, I love the creative control that I have with digital photography. The first part of my studio is the outdoors. In Bucks County, we have natural beauty, history, changing seasons, weather, and lighting conditions. The same scene could look so different with a pink early morning sky, a dense fog, fall foliage, or a fresh coat of snow.
The next part of my studio is my camera, my tripod, and my equipment bag. Typically, I have about 25 pounds of gear with me. In the bag, I have different lenses, filters, and other accessories. Ansel Adams taught us that the single most important component of a camera is the 12 inches behind it. So my goal while I'm in the field is to convey to the viewer what I'm feeling while I'm in the scene, what I'm seeing, what's interesting, and what's beautiful about that particular setting at that particular time. I'm an early riser, so mist, morning light, and the rising sun are often part of my photographs. The last part of my studio is my computer. This is where I make a series of adjustments to my images. For instance, I might brighten or darken or bring out detail in a particular section of a photograph. Also, in scenes where there is a lot of contrast between the darkest and the brightest part, while I'm in the field, I take a series of exposures. When I'm back home, I combine them into one final image. This is called high dynamic range photography. Here are a few examples of my HDR photographs that I created by merging multiple exposures. My photographs are available as prints and gallery wraps through my online Etsy shop. Now my photographs are displayed in homes, businesses, and medical offices all over the world. I've also given presentations on photographic composition and HDR photography, and I've led photo tours through Bucks County. If you'd like to see more of my work, visit my Etsy shop, follow me on Instagram, or check out my blog. Thanks very much for watching today. My name is Joyce Indrevitsen and this is my studio. Welcome. Now, I do clay mostly, stoneware and porcelain. The stoneware and porcelain is behind me. And I will show you my cutwork. My cutwork is my forte. And these pieces are freely cut. This one has a pattern, as you can see. And I've done that with a piece of paper and traced it on. And then I use a very tiny, skinny knife to make the curves in my pieces. I do a lot of functional wear, a lot of decorative wear and I make my own glazes. And the glaze gives a lot of interest up here and some other kind of decorations that I use. Uh, Stoneware gets fired to 2380 degrees. It takes a day to fire and a day and a half to be able to empty the kiln to see what I've done. So it, it takes a bit of time. And I also do the Raku. Raku is over here. And uh, when I do this type of work, I have the firing in mind and the pieces come out of the kiln at 1750 degrees. The door comes off and they come out and I smoke them or I flame them. And this is a smoked piece and it makes the clay very black and the copper glaze is very shiny and coppery. And this one shows the matte glaze and the matte glaze, uh, I use flames and direct the flames where they're gonna go and it makes a whole bunch of different colors. And then I decorate, I decorate with my beads or with full fur, or with feathers, or a combination of any of those kind of things. And uh, everybody wants a, a photograph uh, to enter a show, so I have a photograph station here. And then I do one other kind of art. I just started. It's my painting. I'm very happy and delighted to do it. It's relaxing. And here's one of my latest pieces here I'm still working on. Uh, it's oil paint. That also takes a bit of time, but you're welcome to come to my studio. All you need to do is contact me at JoyceMI at Comcast.net, and uh, you may look at my uh, want to look at my uh, website, JIPottery.com. Thank you for coming.
I'm Kathleen Moore and welcome to my studio. My studio is at my home. A while back, my husband Bob and I went to an event that was hosted by Vale Carbon of the Central Bucks Chamber. And uh, at the event, she introduced us to world-renowned portrait painter Nelson Shanks. We got to talk to Nelson and he told us about the school um, that he was starting in Philadelphia called Studio and Caminati. And I ended up going to some workshops and then decided to enroll in the four-year art program there. And um, I learned the techniques that uh, Nelson taught and Carrie Dunn and others there. And it gave me the tools to um, be a painter. I like to paint um, figure, still life, and landscape, but mostly portraits. I would describe my style probably uh, as contemporary realism with uh, emphasis on color. The portrait project is something I started several years ago. And what it entails is going into um, high school classrooms and painting one day portrait sketches of the students in their class. And the students experience sitting for a portrait and get to watch the process. And I found that they are very engaged in watching their portrait being painted and their classmates' portraits being painted. They get to learn how to stretch a canvas and they get to keep the portraits afterwards. This year, I couldn't go into the classroom, so I painted from pictures and provided time-lapse video of the progress for the students to watch and learn from. Many reasons come to mind for wanting a portrait painted, but one student I painted expressed it so perfectly that many people are unhappy with their image and snapshots but a portrait takes time to develop just like a person takes time to get to know. I think it's very true, and this can result in an image that is more representative of who that person is. I also had a young woman say to me after sitting for a portrait that I made her look so beautiful, uh, but I told her that you are beautiful. I think art can do this, it can help us see the beauty in us and around us. I hope you enjoyed your visit to my studio and I look forward to seeing you for a portrait sitting in the future. <laughs>